Hello and welcome to Full Moon's Video Zone. I hope you all enjoyed Talisman. This picture was shot entirely at our studio in Bucharest, Romania. Uh, we are also shooting and finishing right now uh, the fourth installment of Subspecies. Ted Nicolau and all the principals went back to Romania again to complete the Subspecies uh, saga. And I'm excited about not only seeing uh, Radu and Michelle and all the characters you've known from prior subspecies films reunited, but also the introduction of Ash uh, from Vampire Journals. Our next release will be Blood Dolls. This is a picture which I'm directing, so I'm real excited about getting behind the camera again. There's some new surprises. The Blood Dolls are very cool, and we're going to have a soundtrack album out through ARC-21. This weird, large eyeball behind me is from a film called The Killer Eye. It will be the first release on a new label of ours called Pulp Fantasy. Uh, the Pulp Fantasy label uh, in 1999 will have 12 releases, one a month. They're going to be very lurid, uh, freaky titles, a little bit different than Full Moon. Uh, some of the uh, titles of the movies coming up are Buried Alive, The Dead Hate the Living, Bride of the Dead, Sideshow, Floater, Revolt of the Cannibal Freaks, I guess you get an idea from these titles just what kind of movies we're making. They're freaky, they're lurid, and I'm sure you're going to love them. So look for these bizarre movies in 1999, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Video Zone. Full Moon offers their 666 course in terror as they unveil a subject that fans can really put their hearts into. So join up now. Space is limited. Oh my god. And the student body count is rising. My god. My god. Talisman. Talisman, I guess, is about this uh, this boy who, when he was six years old, went to um, Romania with his sister because um, his great uncle had died and left in his will that if his parents went over and performed one final rite over the grave, then they would inherit all his money. So my parents go over there, and, they, and they're supposed to take me and my sister. We go over there, they do the final rite, and um, the angel of darkness arises and, and tears out their hearts and possesses my sister, and I run away and, and get back to the States and grow up there. And then um, at the age of 18, I get this letter. I've always thought my sister is dead. But I get this letter that says um, she's alive and in Romania, and so I go off searching for her and try and find my sister, and okay, I arrive at this boarding school with all these boys and the headmistress, and and the uh, doctor of theology and, and this girl who, who threw out the thing I find out is my sister and, and um, she meanwhile is slowly raising the angel of darkness who, and killing off the other boys because she needs to have them all prepared at the turn of the millennium so that she can take over the world as the queen of darkness and she wants me to reign at her side as her king. And we stand on the edge of a great change and all great changes are marked by the spilling of blood. Innocent blood. Who of us is truly innocent? Look. His name is Theriel. He was cast out of heaven because he refused to bow down before God. But he bows down before me and you. Why? Because we're royalty. It was fun and it was some, you know, a fun part to go into and an interesting topic. And, and you know, as a kid, I had, you know, I used to play games and stuff and, you know, like all kids, and you, you create imaginary worlds and stuff where you have these strange powers and supernatural forces and everything. But I guess I, I never really thought about them as being, you know, good or bad. Everybody was kind of like, this part is made for you. <laughs> just because the things, the, the way that he spoke, it just kind of like rattled right off my tongue. And because I, I guess I can be a bit of a smart aleck myself. <laughs> Well, you learn something new every day. My God, a wet blackboard. <laughs> Wait till it starts to dry. I'd never done a horror movie before. Um, I, so that was another thing that really attracted me to the script, is the fact that it was an opportunity to do something different. And uh, it was cool. You know, I, I thought, um, 
you know, just being in a horror movie and, and, and dealing with the aspects of fear, you know, it was, it was a different thing, different challenge as an actor. The, the whole aspect of the script was totally different. I mean, I've been acting for 10, 11, 12 years. I've read a billion scripts, and this script, somehow, it, it wasn't the stereotypical uh, violent movie. It wasn't, wasn't the story everyone knows the ending, because the ending, actually, I think is a surprise. But every aspect in this, in this script, I think, is riveting. Like, the, the scenes just flow with each other, and it just catches the audience by surprise. While makeup effects artist Mark Williams helped the actors find their hearts for the performances, computer effects artist David Wagner provided their souls. Well, basically, we have this program called Elastic Reality that we use, and they've used it in Babylon 5 and a lot of TV and science fiction movies. Um, you take and bring the shot into the, the program, and then you draw um, a circle or a shape on the area that you want to morph, and then you draw a bigger one, and that's the area that's morphing too. And you just have to do this and track it through the entire shot from frame to frame, so that at least it looks um, steady as it's distorting all the way through. And then you just go in and drag out the points that you want to move. Media Paint's a good program because, I mean, we can do anything with it. I mean, on the last movie, I used it to do laser beams and electricity, and it's got some preset effects that you can use. I'm also using it to do the fire for the hearts. And basically, you open your palette, it shows you all the lens flares you can use, you can resize them any size you want, and then when you, once you've got it to the size you want, you've got a little paintbrush, and you just dab it on the eyes, and it makes the lens flare for you. I didn't actually get to do too much with the special effects since um, since I never get killed and, and nothing happens. Yeah, I got to watch a little bit. I'm, it was a lot of fun watching all the blood come spurting out of. I felt really bad for her because. We did the shot from my side, and there really wasn't any blood. All you see is just this flashing knife, slashing stuff. And then when they, you know, turned it to the camera and take the other, the other shot, and and she's just getting doused in this oozing red stuff, and it's like going all over the place. And and um, and she was really good about it. I mean, she did it full out right from the beginning. Even though I mean, it was it was going in her mouth and up her nose, and every, I mean, there was blood everywhere. And and afterwards, I know, I mean, she was sort of, you know, I don't know, not really ill, but, you know, a little, <laughs> I'll show, you know, because she had blood going down her throat, and, and it was in her mouth, and she had to spit it out, and it was there, you know, it gets in her eyes, and, and everything, but, but she was really good about it, and I think, you know, in the end, it, she had fun, and, it, you know, she'll certainly remember <laughs> jumping into this hose of blood from, for, for a long time. I love gore. Give me gore! <laughs> I love gore. So, you know, the gore didn't affect me at all. It didn't bother me. I think blood and guts is great, you know, especially if most people that watch horror movies, they like to see that, too, you know what I mean? Especially, like, the old movies, like, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, what's the one where they're in the, the guy has a, the chainsaw massacres and stuff like that, you know? Those movies have just tons of gore, you know, the... The, the Living Dead and Evil Dead, stuff like that, you know. I think gore is cool. Only a particular scene that I that I liked more than other ones was when uh, um, the heart got ripped out of me with all the special effects, when they put the goo and they had the, uh, the stick with blood flowing all over my face. I knew it was only one take, which was more challenging, and it was just so fun. I mean, just blood squirting all over my eyes and watching this angel of death. I mean, in character, he was so scary. His eyes were riveting. So when, when he was just holding me and just caressing me and just, just wanting to kill me, I really got scared. I, even if I wasn't in character, he would, he would have scared me. So just the blood flying all over me was fun. It took me to a new place. I can't really explain it, but that, I remember that. It gave, gave me shivers all over, basically. Talisman. Lots of, of little plot twists and little intricacies and interesting scenes. A chilling part of the curriculum. You don't know what's going to happen next. We all worked really hard to make 
to make it as realistic and as scary as we could. At full moon. ago, they vanished without a trace. Now, Andre Toulon's puppets have found a new home and a new puppet master. I'm Dr. McGrew. I run the marble show out on Route 23. Whoa. Whoa. Fastest six guns in the West. Six shooter. Give me a hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who wants to steal their secrets? See, I've tried to duplicate that process, but I've never been able to make a living puppet. I've come close. Help me. To create the perfect species. You see, I want to carve a living puppet just like this. And you have a special skill. I need you to carve me a miracle. But he's about to discover the Toulon's magic. You may be the first of a new race of beings, a superior race. Has a deadly price. Somebody in this place has stumbled onto something, and they're getting close. Trapped within its walls. Fifty years ago, something happened here. Seven people were killed by something. Now, the others must find a way out. It's not the same lock. Somebody replaced it before they become its next victim. Shrieker. If you hear it, it's too late. After years of experiments, Andre Toulon has created puppets that want to play with you. Full Moon introduces the Puppet Master action figure series. Eight dolls that come alive with movable parts and accessories to spare. Blade can strike with a hatchet or a knife and see with eyes that glow in the dark. 
When his friend Pinhead lifts these dumbbells, he can really blow his top. Six Shooter always has you in his sights with six pistol packing arms. Jester leads the puppet parade with his scepter, knife, and a revolving head that will wipe the smile off your face. If Tunneler's movable drill doesn't get you, then his machine gun and pickaxe will. Leech Woman has a kiss to die for and plenty of slimy friends to grow around. The action heats up with Torch's glowing flamethrower. And watching over this madness is the totem and his power gem. The new line of Puppet Master action figures are now stocking your toy and specialty stores. For more information, log on to the Full Moon Toys website at fullmoontoys.com. For more information about Full Moon and our films, write to Full Moon Pictures, 8721 Santa Monica Boulevard, Suite 526, West Hollywood, California, 90069. Or visit our website at fullmoonpictures.com. And for fan club and ordering information, call our toll-free number, 1-877-315-6666. That's 1-877-315-MOON.